Excellent. Welcome to the Exploit demo meeting. We're getting on into May. Looking forward to summertime here. Uh, we have a good group of new modules this time around. Let's talk about them. Community contributor A Camera dropped another Oracle WebLogic exploit module for a deserialization vuln in the async response service web service component. Using a specifically crafted SOAP request, an un unauthenticated attacker can gain remote code execution on a vulnerable target. And if you'd like to see a demo of this, watch our last Metasploit demo meeting recording where Aaron Soto showed it in action. Uh, it, at that point in time, it was in master but hadn't been cut in a release, and now it's in the release. So check it out. Part of that cool series from the camera. And from community contributor Green Wolf comes a module targeting Postgres versions 9.3 through current releases. If you have creds for a super user or a user in the PG execute server program group on the target, this module can hook you up with remote command execution via the copy from program mechanism that Postgres has. That's pretty neat and uh, I'll show a demo of this. And it's been a while since we've had a browser exploit module, uh, but thanks to contributor Tim WR, Tim Wright, also known as, we have one targeting Chrome 72.0.36.26.19. <laughs> that is a mouthful. On Windows 7, x86 systems where the Chrome sandbox has been disabled, this module takes advantage of a use after free bug in Chrome's file read API to gain remote code execution. And the PR desk contains some discussion about chaining us with the sandbox escape exploit, so check it out if you're interested in learning more. That's kind of a fun one. Well, cool. So it drops you in the sandbox to start with? Well, Chrome does. I think okay. it automatically, yeah, by default. So, so it's in that works more, more broadly on, on more versions of just like I remember the original one that was exploited in the wild was targeting mostly Windows 7 32 bit because the, it was able to chain with the sandbox uh, escape. Escape. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But if you just want to live with inside Chrome, you can, you know, be content with that uh, for, for, for most parts. <laughs> the, world, the, the sandbox garden. Wow. Like cool. wall garden. I don't know. Um, and our next module comes from community contributor True Random and targets Get Simple CMS, which identifies itself as quote the simplest content management uh, system ever. There's an extra period in there too. Um, this, this module uses an arbitrary file upload and software versions up to and including 3.3.15 to gain unauthenticated remote code execution on the target. And I believe we'll have a demo of this. Yeah, awesome. Super cool. Rounding out our list of modules uh, on this slide today, uh, community contributor Hoodie created a new post gatherer module targeting Ubiquity Unified Network Controllers on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. And this module will download backup and auto backup files, decrypt them, and store them as loot. Pretty neat. Love these modules. And yeah, let's see here. There's been some other cool new stuff going on. Community contributor Exorcist provided a new very small Linux TCP bind shell payload, bringing it at a svelte 44 bytes. It is similar to the old <laughs> shell bind TCP random port payload, but instead of doing socket calls directly, this new payload relies on Netcat to handle those. And our own B Cook, who's sitting across the table from me, integrated this new payload approach into the existing shell bind TCP random port payload with logic to auto-select the new smaller payload if the framework user requests a payload size less than the 57 bytes of the original payload size. Uh, sound accurate? Oh, you're spot on, man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Want to keep me honest here. <laughs> yeah, that was fair. Yeah, it was super cool because it came, originally came in as a separate new payload module, but uh, the integration makes it kind of work seamlessly depending on what the framework user requests. Yeah. Very cool. uh, a little funny note, and I need to pull four, four class for this, but um, I found that there was a whole subsystem of the payload cache that's only used by like three modules and we could probably get rid of it um, and simplify the payload generation code substantially. Oh, so cool. um, as a side effect of looking into this, this yeah. code later. So look for that coming up soon. Yeah, there you go. I was going to say, we'll be talking about that probably in the, in the future. Uh, and our own WB provides usability or use ability improvement for the use command, allowing an MSF console user who's searching for a module via use and then select to then select the specific module they want from the search output index numbers. And to help clarify that statement, let's look at a quick example. Okay, so here the user is interested in an eternal blue module. As you can see right there, they type use eternal blue and use reports back that there are five available and it gives an index number next to each one. And then the user says, oh, I want the middle one. So they just, all they need to do is say use with the number two, indicating this one here. And sure enough, the prompt shows that that module has been selected. So should should be you know useful for people you know pun intended for you know work, helping smooth out a workflow and you know just if you don't remember the exact module you want, we'll help you out. What this was this is awesome. This was one of the piece of feedback on one of these demo settings as well, right? Like somebody said, hey, can you guys use it with a number or something? 
Yeah, actually, I think someone had asked for this like five years ago as well, and we kind of, you know, him been hot a little bit about like, well, what if someone puts that on a wiki, the word used to, and, and I think we eventually kind of got comfortable with, oh, that's okay. Yeah, <laughs> we just needed some time. Yeah, that's super cool. So I love that stuff. The bug fixes, we have a few bug fixes. Uh, community chamber Praetic provided a fix for regression in the MS14064 OLE code execution module, which was due to some recent fixes and improvements regarding the wrapping quotes functionality in the Rex PowerShell gem, so we appreciate that. Our own Bcook dropped in a few fixes, including a fix for post API test cases where username isn't a valid environment variable, which is like non Windows systems, uh, and a payload generation fix, which is kind of related to the thing we just talked about uh, the, the new smaller TCP bind payload. Uh, to fix a base size violate to, to base size violation errors on the size of the encoded payload binary, not the formatted output. So thank you, Brent. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Making it better. Tort nothing. Tort nothing. Uh, and you can always read all the details in the weekly Metasploit wrap up blog post at blog.rapid7.com. And as always, a huge thanks to all who help make, make Metasploit better through their contributions. No goofy graphic this week, just a hearty thank you. All right, thank you. And with that. Time for demos. As I said earlier, this uh, exploits this Git Simple CMS. Um, and all it is is uh, an arbitrary file upload that's unauthenticated. It's really just um, on a, uh, there, there's functionality where you can um, upload a theme and there's not really any sanitization on that file. So then you can just upload an arbitrary file and get code execution. So. There's the name, and then executing is pretty straightforward. All you have to do is uh, type in the IP address, and you should be good to go, which it looks like I already did. So hit run, and then interpreter session. Nice. And this affects like a ton of versions of it. Yeah, that? multiple versions. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I forget how many, but quite yeah. a few. Super cool. And you make it look painless, Shelby. Awesome. <laughs> mm -hmm. Super cool. All right, cool. Thanks. Thank you, Shelby. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to demo the new uh, Postgres uh, module that, that came in. Uh, this one utilizes a copy from program uh, mechanism. Uh, as of this writing, it was versions 9.3 9 through current, which I guess at the time the module submitted was like 11.2. I'm not sure what it is at now, but we're, all, we're vulnerable to this. So the top window here is a my victim uh, target, if you will. I'll try to dig in that. Maybe I really big. I really want it that big. That's fine. It is readable. Uh, we'll just do a uname here to kind of see where we're you know getting it. But so this identifies itself as, as a Linux system. And down here, I'm um, big in this. I'm going to kick off my framework. Uh, just to show that they are, uh, you can see a slight difference there in the way they identify themselves from the uname command. So, keeping me honest, we'll run framework at the console here. I'll let that start up. So, this, this uh, module will get you remote command execution, does not, it does require authentication. So, you either have to be no creds for a super user on the system, which in this case is what I'm doing today or that user has to be a member of a specific uh, group that has privileges to run the copy from program command. So similar to Martha Stewart, I'm just gonna use my pre-cooked commands to, to load it up here, but we'll run through them. There's, a, there's about seven options or so you have to set, because you have to set the username, the password, the database name, the target, et cetera, et cetera. Let me see, let me get my, pull this up a little bit here. All right, there we are, okay. So we'll start by selecting the module first. Uh, da, 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 there we go. So you can see it's exploit, multi, Postgres, Postgres copy from program command execution. All right, we've selected that now. We will set the, the R host. Uh, so that's my target, the, this VM up here. We will set the username. My app, this is using a pre-cooked uh, Vagrant um, VM from, from Postgres, actually. I've just gone in and I've, I've given um, super user privileges to the my app user, which it doesn't do by default, but I, for this illustrations of this uh, module, I, I did so just in full disclosure. Set the payload to be a reverse Perl 
shell. Let's see here. All right. And we need to say where we want, want it to phone home to. So these are just the settings for this current VM. And that's kind of it. At this point, you're ready to go. Assuming I did all the things right, it says, hey, you've got a session now. And this does match this. Yeah. And you can even do like last temp. You can say touch temp foo. So mm -hmm. as easy as one, two, three. But you do have to have the copy from the, the user has to have the ability to run the copy from program mechanism, which actually uh, runs a program and then takes the output to put into a, a table in the database. That's, that's what that mechanism is for. Uh, so if you have creds for a user that has that ability uh, on your target, you, know, you are good to go. Hmm. So. Is there a way to know, I guess, scan for users that have these creds already set up without having to sort of do a mother may I exploitation attempt? That's a great question. Uh, I don't know the answer to that. Okay. <laughs> I tried this module for the first time about 30 minutes ago. So. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but it worked. And well. it worked. Yeah, it's okay. great. I love it. Um, you know, good work from the you know community and, and, and partnering with our side and getting it landed. I think a big part of it also was updating the Postgres client itself to be able to talk to more versions of Postgres at the same time. It's, a, it's kind of a side effect. All oh, right. Side. There was a yeah. there was quite a bit of work in the PR that went back and forth. Yeah. So it's good stuff. Cool. And so this is a file dropper, so you could use any payload you wanted, pretty much. I believe that's the case. Yeah. Right. Nice. Yeah. All right. Cool. Super well, cool. look look forward to Meterpreter in your database columns. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. That's right. Excellent. <laughs>